Okay, I want to say really quickly to everybody, every 25 subscribers that come to this channel, I'm going to put out a new tutorial. So if you want more tutorials, literally subscribe, and I will be making them for the foreseeable future, every 25 subscribers. All right, with that out of the way, let's do this one. This was a request from the comments. So again, I will be trying to make tutorials that you guys ask for. It's, it's not very hard. It's kind of interesting. Every time we smash one of these wood blocks and destroy them, we're going to keep track of a score. So you can see up at the top says my score is one or your score is one. So if we go over to the next one and we smash that one too. Not only do we get a little thing that says your score is two that pops up, it also says my score is two. Go to the next one, hit that one as well. So that is the functionality that we're going to be building today. Okay, so we are inside of UEFN now, and I'm going to show you the quickest way that I could figure out how to do this by the request in the comments, which was to use a prop manipulator. Now, a prop manipulator is a really cool uh, little device that we can put in its volume, essentially. And when we put it in place, it's going to be a particular size. So let's go ahead and just uh, delete this one. And we're going to go down into the Fortnite devices and look for prop. And right here is the prop manipulator. So go ahead and drag that up and you can see it's kind of small. We move it around a little bit. It just looks like this weird little box. But if we go into the details, then we can see that we can set it to affect all objects in a zone. Click that and it turns into a volume. Now I've done this both ways. I've scaled it and I've also adjusted the zone width, depth and height. I'm not sure which one you have to do, but we can just do this one here, two and two, and that makes it a little bit bigger. Now it gets big really. You can just drag and this will make it huge uh, really, really quickly. So two is pretty good, which means you probably don't need to use scale. So keep that in mind. This prop manipulator is going to live all around my little blocks of wood that live in my game. I want this prop manipulator to tell me when they get destroyed, because I don't think there's another way to do that. And prop manipulator is a really easy way to do it. Another quick thing that you can actually do is you can modify the prop health. If you click this, then you can set it to either invulnerable, so it can never be destroyed, or you can set your prop health to be a certain thing. So for example, some of these wood piles give more wood than others. So I would actually want a prop manipulator on top of it that could modify the prop health. So you have to keep on whacking away until it finally does get destroyed. So we're going to, uh, we're just going to leave this off for now. In the other one, I changed it. So it'd be a hundred. I'll we'll leave it off. Okay. So with the prop manipulator done, this is it. We're completely done. Uh, we need to go and do some verse code. Okay. So this project is from my elevator uh, project. And also I have a following head project coming along uh, pretty quick here, a tutorial for you guys. I've already got a game manager. So I'm going to double click this and it's going to open up my verse code here. And inside of my verse code, we're going to take a look at what we really need to do. So we need to make an editable. When we make an editable, it means we can access it in the game. So I've called it prop manipulator. It's a prop manipulator device and I instantiate it here. So when you do that, save this file, then go up to the top, hit verse, build verse code, and then go to your game manager device that's sitting on your, uh, sitting in your scene and then quickly put in the prop manipulator object that lives right inside of here for your editables. Okay, so once that's done, you won't forget it and it'll just be plain done. Back to verse. Now, so now, now that we've got that out of the way, uh, the other thing that I also did was I used a HUD message device. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial, but it simply shows that little blinky thing that comes up with a little sound and says you got however many points. But I might, I might talk about that in another one. When the wood is destroyed. We've already covered this. I'll link to that uh, tutorial in the description. We call this on item destroyed. When we do something within the prop manipulator, we want to subscribe to particular events. Now the prop manipulator actually has a few events going on. So if we control click here, we can see damaged event, destroyed event, harvesting event, resource depletion event, and then we can enable, disable, show props, hide props, all kinds of stuff. It's really, really a handy device to use for sure. So what we want to do is we want to know when something is destroyed. In this case, we're going to subscribe to that on item destroyed. So when the item is destroyed, we're going to capture the agent. It's going to get passed and we're going to capture that and we're passing back nothing. So it's a void to keep track of a score. This is doing it sort of globally. We would we would likely want to do this per player. So I have another tutorial that allows us to track players. I'm going to link to that as well, because that's what we would actually probably want to do. We want to track it per player. But in this case, just do something quick. We're going to put the destroy score here. 
in a variable. It must be in a variable, otherwise we can't change it. And we also want to keep track if we've created our user interface. I find this is the easiest way to do it, so that's what I do. And it is a text block. Now we've covered text blocks in another tutorial. Again, look at the list. I'll try to link it below. Uh, but we're going to make a text block on the screen. When an item is destroyed, we're going to add one to our score, and then we're going to grab the player from the agent that comes from the prop manipulator, and then we grab the UI, so we get the player UI of the player. And then we check to see if we've created the UI or not. If we haven't created the UI, create it. If we have created it, just set the text that's in it. And uh, this kind of stuff, again, it's, it's all covered in the past tutorial, but we were literally just... Uh, creating a widget. It's going to create a little widget that has the text block that we set up here in it. And we add that to the player UI with the add widget function, add in the scored widget. And then we're going to set the text blocks text with this set dynamic text is just a way to turn text into a message object because that's what the text block needs. So putting all that together, we create the text block widget and uh, add the text block to it with the create score UI function. Now this I've already covered as well. This is literally just making a canvas that has a slot in it that just sets where this thing should go. And uh, the widget itself is a text block that we pass in here. Hopefully this all makes sense. If it doesn't, again, check out that past tutorial. This is it. We're done. <laughs> That's it. You're completely, you're completely finished. Uh, there's, there's nothing more to do. All the other stuff is, uh, some other, uh, the next tutorial that I want to show you guys, um, which will come up after another 25 subscribers. So this literally will do everything that you need to do. Now, ideally we'll make it per player. Uh, we'll have a player object, a custom player object, and it will do this kind of stuff. But for now, we only have one player in the game and this is how we would get it done. So we can keep track of our score, show it on the screen uh, for particular props that live within the prop manipulator uh, volume. And uh, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. It's a pretty cool little bit of functionality. And if you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one.